Welcome to Supernatural Life. My name is Patricia King. Our subject today is on heavenly encounters. You know, Jesus said for us to pray in a certain way. He said, address our heavenly father and say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, when you are born again, there's a divine connection between the life of God in you, the life of God in heaven, and that realm has opened up to you. And we're seeing more and more and more of heaven manifesting in the earth. So it's going to be an exciting show. And with me today, I have our co-host, Robert Hodgkin. Hi, Patricia. It's always great to have you yeah, on the show. Yeah, it's great to be and, with you. Uh, Robert is a co-laborer with me um, in our ministry, Patricia King Ministries, and he's an itinerant minister, and you lead uh, Heroes Arise men on the, on the front, front lines, lines and, yep. and you're over there in Thailand and in the nation. So yeah. we so appreciate you and the ministry that you're carrying. Well, I'm grateful I get to be here with you. Yeah. Today. Well, I want to give a bit of a prophetic context yeah. to our subject today, because in 1994, there was a very clear visitation of the Spirit mm -hmm. in Toronto. And the Spirit of God came down during some meetings at the Toronto Airport uh, Fellowship, which was the name of it back then. And uh, people were touched sovereignly by the power of God. Um, there was a lot of people laughing and, of course, crying and rolling on the floor and everything because it was like heaven itself came down. Yeah. I remember back then, Robert, going to meetings uh, because we took our team out there. I mean, that whole renewal, it lasted for years and years. But in the beginning stages, the glory was so thick that I brought my team out there from the yeah. West Coast um, every month. We went out there. And there was times that you would be in your hotel room, which was like a few blocks away, and the glory would hit. It would be in the elevators, on mm. the streets, in the vehicles. It was phenomenal. It was like a heavenly visitation. Yeah. Well, what happened, Robert, at that time, I believe prophetically that a portal opened, a heavenly portal opened, and that's where the supernatural really began to manifest in believers, and there was an emphasis on the supernatural right. from that time. Right. Of course, it hit all the different nations, uh, Brownsville. Mm -hmm was visited, powerful things happened in Brownsville. I mean, uh, the conviction of the spirit was there. I mean, again, just the glory atmosphere of God touching the nations. And it was a birthing of signs, wonders, and miracles in the earth. And it used to be that, you know, we would hear about miracles and that, but mainly through certain preachers who were anointed. Right. But this wasn't just an anointing. This was the actual glory of heaven yeah. manifesting on on many believers, any believer that was in the atmosphere would get touched. So it's very, very powerful. And these heavenly encounters remind us of who we are because we're not just earthly right. beings. We are That's not. Right. We are aliens. The Bible actually calls us aliens yeah. because our real home and our citizenship is, is heaven. And one of the things that God wants us to do in this hour, he wants us to identify with a supernatural life. That's right. And you said it. Heavenly encounters to me are so important because they remind us what is ours all the time. Now, when we get those open-eyed or open-experienced or manifestations of the heavenly encounters, they're brilliant. I love them. I want more of them. But what they do is they remind us of what is always available to us. So it's like seeing on this big Technicolor screen, here's what's available to you. Here's what you're plugged into. Now release it into the earth. And I love the topic of heavenly encounters yeah. because I got saved yeah. through a heavenly encounter, Tell Patricia. Tell us about that. My whole life, I'd been a mocker and persecutor of Christians. I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't believe in this stuff, I actually made fun of it. And the, the short version is, I was actually living up in the woods of Montana at the time. I was outside my cabin. I'd been splitting a whole lot of wood. Mm -hmm. And I was going through a difficult time in my life. And I kind of exhausted myself splitting the wood out of frustration and everything else. I sat down right in the snow. Enough snow had been falling that it was like sitting in a big armchair in the snowbank. And all of a sudden, as I was trying to figure everything out, all of a sudden, heaven overlapped earth. Wow. And there was this supernatural hush that came like a dome all around me. And the reason I became aware of it is it became so supernaturally silent, Patricia, that all I could hear was this faint little sound. The best way I can describe it is it was almost like a little bead of water hitting mm -hmm. a hot skillet, that tss, tss, tss. And all of a sudden, supernaturally, I knew what it was. It was such a supernatural hush. I was hearing the sound of the snow 
snow that was falling, wow. hitting the snow on the ground. Wow, wow, wow. And I knew something was going on. All of a sudden I realized, wait, this isn't just quiet, this is supernatural. And in that moment, God spoke to me. Wow. And after all those years of making fun of Christianity and Christians, he spoke to my heart. He said, I refuse not to love you. And in that moment, as heaven overlapped earth, I had this ability to connect with God and I brought every wicked, arrogant, selfish thing I'd ever done before him. And every time he said, I refuse not to love you. And that opened this door between him and I, this conversation that ended up with me getting radically saved and giving my life to wow. him the next day through another encounter. Wow. But I love heavenly encounters. That salvation had been available to me all my life. And in that moment, it became real to me. And, and the next day, through another heavenly encounter, I said yes, and everything changed. So when we have these encounters, they're to remind us what is always available to yeah. us. And the other key thing is, and for those of you who are listening, I want you to hear what Patricia was saying about when she would take her team to TACF, blocks away, you were still experiencing yeah. the presence. And that's biblical. When heaven invades yeah. earth, like when Jesus was raised from the dead, dead were raised all over the city. Yeah. So it's not isolated. And even as we share about heavenly encounters on this show, you're going to get in the, the overflow yeah, of absolutely. that. So expect heavenly encounters right where you are. Right on. And I love it when heaven comes to earth like that, like mm -hmm. what we've seen in these revivals and in your testimony and many people's testimony. But the other thing that happened was this loud invitation from the Lord for us to ascend into the heavens. Mm -hmm. So not only will heaven come down we can and visit us, is that we have the access to go up yes. into the heavens. And many times people think, well, yeah, I'll go to heaven when I die. Right. Right. But no, no, you'll go to heaven when you're born again, That's right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Because we have access to heavenly encounter. Now, we don't have time to unpack that all biblically right now because of uh, time, time restraint, but on the glory school. Yeah, when we teach our glory when school, we teach it unpacks glory school, we scripture teach you upon scripture. how to ascend, how to descend, all of that. But in Genesis 28, verse 12 to 17, it tells the story of Jacob's ladder. Mm -hmm. We know it as J Jacob's ladder. And in that, Jacob was asleep. He wasn't thinking about God or anything like that. Um, he was just going to sleep. And in that place, he had this dream where this ladder was from where he was up into the heaven. And angels were ascending and descending on it. And when, when he woke up, he realized, and, and he said, um, how awesome is this place? Is not this the house of God? Yeah. But he, he said, the Lord was here. I didn't even didn't realize it. it. Right. He, didn't, he hadn't even realized yeah. until that, that awareness came to him and it came through a dream. And I believe that for many of you, there's going to be a heavenly awareness, a new right. heavenly awareness. Because as we advance the kingdom in these days, Robert, we can't right. do it just with natural abilities. Right. We have to know who we are. Yes. We are supernatural, heavenly beings representing the King of Kings. And know what's available to us so we can be bold to step out. No Amen. healings available to us. No miracle signs and wonders. No heaven is available to us. So we can boldly step out to release it into the exactly. earth because that's going to get the attention of this world. Exactly. I was with Rick Riding um, just a little while ago. I just love him. For, for those of you that don't know him, a powerful apostolic leader, prayer leader, priesthood of God. He just manifests and he lives in Israel. And his whole family serves the Lord. And uh, his, his daughter was fighting illness and uh, they were believing for healing and she passed. So they believe for resurrection and the Lord brought her back. Amazing. The Lord brought her back. And for 30 days, um, she was with them following this resurrection. And she shared with them for 30 days what the Lord had spoken to her when she went to heaven, after she passed out of her body into heaven. And what I found so awesome, because God is so good, right? And we think of what is heaven like? What's it gonna be like right. when we stand before the right. Lord? And what the Lord said to her wasn't like, because she was a powerful woman of God and she had accomplished many mm -hmm. things. She was anointed, uh, the many projects that she worked on. But he didn't say, oh, in your ministry, you did this and you did this and you did this. That's awesome. But he said, do you remember the time when you were going through a really difficult season? And in that season, you just loved me and worshiped me. And he said, that just really touched me. He says, do you remember the time when that person was going through a hard time and you reached out to them and loved on them? That really touched me. And over and over and over again, he just kept re 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 reminding her of the times 
that she had loved. Mm -hmm. He never said anything about what she hadn't done right or her mistakes or anything. There was none of that. It was just how impressed he was with the times that she loved. Wow. And I just, I, I've been so impacted mm -hmm. by that story. And one day we'll have him share it yeah. fully because there's so much more to it. But one of the things that really came to my mind, Robert, is the atmosphere of heaven is love. It is. And it's so beautiful that when we get atmosphere. connected yeah. mm. to God and to his love, mm -hmm. that we can release it in the earth like never before. And sometimes, you know, we talk about heavenly encounters and we're expecting some big open-eyed, and those can happen and they're great, yep. but we can access heaven by being kind. We can access heaven by loving. We can yeah. access heaven by being patient. We can yeah. access heaven by being kind and patient to somebody who's being yeah. irritating. And we're, we're actually partaking of his divine yes. nature, getting up above and outside of ourselves and accessing heaven and then releasing it into the earth through these simple acts. I Every single it. one of us can do it. You can do it. I love it. And even your testimony of how God got yes. you. It was all about love, oh, wasn't it? Was. Like how he spoke to you. Yeah. I refuse not to love you. And everything and I so, thought should disqualify me, he said, I refuse not to love and you. And I believe that as we grow in these heavenly encounters, we're gonna grow in the revelation of the love of God. And we're gonna be taught how to love more perfectly. We're gonna love better. Well, right now, we have a treat for you because our friend uh, Shirley Seeger was taken up into the heavens and she was brought before the throne of grace in heaven. And she's going to describe her encounter with you right now. So after you watch this, we'll be right back. I had a lot of questions for God. So one day in the spirit, I asked if I could have an appointment with him. So I was escorted by an angel in the spirit down a long red carpet that led to the throne of grace. And as we walked down the carpet, I, I became captivated by the, the carpet itself. I'd never seen anything like it. The angel nudged me and said, walk boldly. I said, I'm sorry, there isn't an ounce of boldness in me. And the angel answered rather sternly and said, the boldness I speak of is not formed from your own experience. The boldness comes from the knowledge of what your feet tread upon. I knelt down and touched the carpet. It was wet. The angel said, there is no other way for you to enter the throne of grace, but by his blood, no other way. Sobs racked my soul as I realized I was walking on the blood of Christ. Blood so freely given to clothe us in his perfection and open wide the gates to the throne of grace to all who would come. Oh, how I loved him. I bolted up and ran into that throne room, knowing without a doubt that such a sacrifice as this should never be doubted or debased. Abba, Father, I cried as I ran into the loving open arms of my heavenly Father. Wrapped in his loving arms, I wanted nothing from him but him. In his presence, there are no questions. There is no doubt. Only love, contentment, and peace. I'm getting a word right now for someone who You've grown up in a real legalistic environment, and you even wonder sometimes if you'll ever get into heaven. And when Shirley was sharing her vision and her encounter in heaven at the throne of grace and how the blood-soaked carpet, you know, was all the way up to it, it's like it really touched your heart. And I pray for you right now that you get the revelation of the grace of God because he loves you and he, he, nothing can keep him from loving you. And when you feel that connection to him in heaven, it's not a connection where you'll think, oh, he's going to scold me or he's upset with me or he's going to tell me all the things I've done wrong. No, no, it's not that at all. He's going to tell you how loved you are. 
and how much you've blessed him every time that you trusted him, every time that you knew him. So I break the power of that legalistic spirit that has held you in bondage, and I release the grace of God to you. When we're talking about heavenly encounters, we want to remember that the heavens are open to us now because of Christ who lives in us. That's right. There's nothing that can keep you from heaven. It's open access into heaven. And uh, Jesus said in John 1, 50 and 51, he described himself as a ladder, right. really, right. with angels, uh, you know, this ladder that connects with heaven. So when he's in us, we're connected. Yes. And also in Hebrews 12, 22 to 24, we see that we've already come to Mount Zion. That's right. We've already come to the heavenly Jerusalem. That's this right. isn't something we're going to come to. It even this says is we've already come to Jesus. Already are. So we yeah. have to believe that by faith that we're already there. It's not like, oh my goodness, what can I do to get there? No, just have rest and believe that you already have access. That's right. You know, Patricia, when I was a new Christian um, and I was traveling with you and Ron a lot and everywhere we went, um, um, it seemed like people were prophesying over me. And over and over again, they would prophesy, heaven's available to you, heaven's open to you, the revelations of heaven are waiting for you. Press in, press in, God has so much for you. And I was a new believer. I was in my 40s, but I was a new believer. And I would go into my prayer time and literally press in, like, okay, I'm gonna press in, I'm gonna press in, I'm gonna press in. And one day I was in prayer with uh, Steve Swanson. He used to be our worship leader, and he saw me doing this. He said, what are you doing? I said, everybody tells me to press in. I'm so hungry for everything I got. I'm pressing in. And he laughed. He said, how's that working for you? I said, I'm getting really frustrated. And he said, let me show you how I press in. <sighs> he said, I press in by knowing I'm already there. And the light went off for me. We're already seated with Christ in heavenly places. We're constantly having heavenly experiences. Our born again spirit is bombarded with the reality of heaven all around it and within it. It's bringing our body and soul into yeah. alignment and choosing by faith to agree with it. I remember in 1994, I had a sovereign visitation into heaven. So I didn't do anything to access heaven. Right. I, it was just a sovereign visitation. And after that time, I kept striving just like, yeah. I want another yeah, one, yeah. I want another one. Oh, yeah. God, take me right. up into heaven right. again, right? And it was years later that I met Bob Jones, a prophet who's gone on to be with the Lord right now. And I told him about the visitations. He said, yep, I have those every day. And I call them my daily raptures. And I said, what? You go up into heaven every single day? And he says, yep. He says, you can too. And I said, every day? I said, I've been waiting for years to have another encounter. Oh. He said, you go by faith. He said, the Bible says you're already there. That's right. And so the next day he prayed for me and led me into an encounter, which was a faith encounter, not a sovereign encounter. And I teach this all in the yes, glory right, school because right. it's a big thing to unpack. But that being said, that God wants you to know that you can have these daily raptures. You can live out of a heavenly perspective and about and out of heavenly encounter. And again, quickly, to reemphasize this, the sovereign encounters are amazing, and God can do that whenever he wants, because he's sovereign. But they're reminding us of what is always available to us. Right. And then the faith act is agreeing with that. Right. And I believe the more we do that, the more we open up that realm. Absolutely. Because our faith is a substance Absolutely. that brings that into space and time. And you get to a point after a while when you're focused on it that it just becomes almost like yes. an invisible veil. Because you know it, you're having you're them, so out. you start looking for them. And the littlest thing is this reminder that you've, oh God, you have my attention. What's going on? Exactly. And, and it's one heavenly encounter after another. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Patricia, we have a question from a viewer from Dotimi in Aberdeen, Scotland. She asks, are there certain things you can do that increase heavenly encounters in your life and ministry? Right. And for me, the first thing I'd say is what we already talked about is A, know that you're having them and find yourself agreeing with them. Right. Add your faith to it because your faith as a substance will help manifest right. in space and time what's always going on in the eternal realm. Right. Another, um, I mean, this is a given, right? Is when you worship, you are aligning yourself with God. Now, Jesus said, pray in this way, our Father who lives in heaven, holy is your name. In other words, acknowledge God as your Father and then, and then worship him. You know, acknowledge him. And so in worship, you're acknowledging him. And as you get into that focus, there's an automatic connection to his heart that takes place. So I think worship yes. is a key for yeah. them. And prayer is one. And 
one of the ways we can change and, and open up the heavenly encounters is to realize prayer is conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And like right now we're talking. Right. And as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at you, I know you're right there with me. I'm expecting a response from you. When we pray, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Share your heart with God, but do it intentionally. Know he's there, know he's listening, and expect a response from him. And the more you do that, the more it's gonna happen. And you mentioned to expect, and I yes. just wanna highlight that, is expectation. You know, don't think, oh, I'll probably never have an encounter. No, say, God, I'm expecting this. I'm expecting, I am seeking you because I believe, and you have an expectation in your heart that God will meet. And we can, seeking his presence is another thing. And we've touched on this some, but you know, God says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. He doesn't say chase the kingdom of heaven. He doesn't say long for, he says, seek it. In other words, turn your eyes to it. So everything we're talking about already is seeking his presence. Doesn't mean, oh, I want your presence. It's knowing you have it, making time, making place for it and looking for it to manifest. Right on. And this one is powerful. It's having communion with God. And I like to have communion every day. And my friend Shirley Seeger, who you heard from uh, earlier, when she has a heavenly encounters, she has them almost every day, she will go before the Lord and take communion first and then go and worship because communion reminds you of the covenant mm -hmm. that you have with God. And it just brings you into that divine union. And it's very, very powerful. And I think, Robert, that we don't take communion enough probably, no, I agree. right? In some ways, I think it's a lost art and it's a forgotten tool. Um, one other way we had here was living a holy life. Yeah. And I think when we live a holy life, we're agreeing with righteousness, we're agreeing with holiness. God is righteous, God is holy. We're partnering with yeah. that grace for yeah. holiness and righteousness within us. So of course it's gonna manifest. And, and I think especially like if we take that you know, contrary to a sinful life, right? If you live a sinful life, it's going to block presence. But when you realize who you really are and say, wow, I'm set apart for God, then it just opens up that realm for you because you're set apart for him, not legalistically, but just knowing who you are. At God TV, we are very committed to your growth in the things of God, in the supernatural, and in the word of God. So we've opened up an e-course portal for you so that you can get equipped and trained. We're going to have a look at that now so that we can give you information, and then we'll be right back to minister to you. Growing the Supernatural with our wide range of premium e-courses. Deepen your understanding of God's presence, the prophetic, healing, the angelic realm, and much, much more. Taught by some of today's most respected leaders and voices. Access more of the Supernatural. Go to god.tv forward slash Patricia. We really do want to encourage you to get equipped because when you walk in the Word, live in the Word, study the Word, it'll make such a difference to your life and it'll keep you founded and grounded as a believer who lives a supernatural life. I have a word right now for someone who had a heavenly encounter. And when you told, it was a spiritual leader, when you told a spiritual leader, they told you that the devil gave you that encounter and actually brought a team to cast the devil out of you, that you had prayer and they were very, very concerned. And it troubled you because you, you, you really thought that it was from the Lord, but because of their reaction, you started doubting yourself. And it was a very traumatic thing, but it shut down all those supernatural things in your life. But God wants you to know that that encounter you had, that heavenly encounter, it was a true encounter. And God wants you to forgive those who misunderstood. They just didn't know, that's all. But he's going to reawaken that hunger, that spirituality in you, so that you can connect with him even more than you ever did before. I'm, I'm getting a word for a woman who's watching. And when I shared the story about pressing in, you laughed and said, oh, I've done that. And first of all, I want you to know that God is so pleased by your hunger and your desire for more of him. But I want to give you a key to shift things. You've, you've been thinking, I want a heavenly encounter. I want to see God. I want to access heaven. Shift your language to Thank you, Lord, that I'm connected to heaven. Thank you, Lord, that I can see you. Thank you, Lord, that I can see into the heavens. And the more you do that, the more it's going to shift and you're going to start to have those heavenly encounters that your soul and body are gonna be aware of that you've been hungering for in your spirit. There's someone uh, watching that you just flipped on the TV and there this program was, and you don't know if you're gonna go to heaven 
at all when you pass. And you've got a loved one who's actually in a uh, coma right now, and it's been a really difficult time. So you're, you're starting to think about the hereafter. But God's knocking on the door of your heart, and he's saying, I want you with me. But there is only one way into heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. So he's knocking on the door of your heart right now, and he's saying, give your life to me. Give your life to me. Invite me into your heart as your personal Savior and Lord. Make me your God, and I will be with you. He wants to give you access into heaven. And then when you go and tell your loved one, even though they're in a coma, they're going to hear you, and God is going to translate them as well. He's going to awaken their heart, and they will come to know him. And I just feel real strong, uh, a real strong anointing on this. So God wants you to come to him. Okay, and would you please uh, let us know, uh, go to uh, the website on the screen right now and let us know what God is doing in your life. Now, before we close the program today, I just want to share from my heart is that, you know, when we talk about the heavens, so there's, of course, the heavens that God lives. That's what we've been talking about. That's the third heaven, God's place of abode. But there's also what we call a cyber heaven, okay? That's the atmospheric heaven in which airwaves are. And that's where we broadcast. We actually broadcast into the heavens through God TV's outreach. We go out into the heavens and fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And we need you. We need your prayers because it is a, it is a, a, a realm that is is, is fought against by the enemy. So we need your prayers and we need your partnership. And so we just want to cons want you to consider becoming a media missionary with God TV so that we can continue to, to release heaven on earth, so that we can continue to reach the masses that are so hungry for him. There are people right now just waiting to be saved, waiting to be touched, waiting to know Holy Spirit, waiting to know God's supernatural power, and you can make a difference. You are a supernatural being. Go and live a supernatural life, and we'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony, or prayer request today, or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv forward slash Patricia and join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.